So you're thinking of starting a photography business. This is a great way to cultivate your creativity, explore beautiful places, meet new people while earning cash on the side. Hey guys, my name is Abby and welcome to my channel all about content creation, photography, and lifestyle. With two to three years of photography under my belt, I'm sharing a step-by-step -step process of how you can start your own photography business even in COVID 2020 by landing your first paying photography client. Stay till the end to see how I got my first paying client. Number one, assess yourself. Why do you exactly want to do this? Just with everything, you need to find the root of your reason. Do you want to do it to develop your skill? to meet people or to make quick cash. I don't think that monetization motivation is necessarily bad, but you gotta remember that your photography is not just about the image or the money, it's also about your client's experience. Also, you need to take into account your actual skills. Are you a newbie? Are you an expert? You don't need to be an expert right away. Um, nobody is, I wasn't, but you need to be teachable and eager to learn. Second, you gotta grab your gear. So as a beginner, you can start with an iPhone or a point and shoot camera to practice. I don't think that you need a $2,000 camera right off the bat, but eventually once you do have paying clients, you do need to invest because that's partially what your clients are paying for and it's only fair. Um, I personally started with the Nikon D3300 for my first two weddings and that totally worked. Um, I can link that down below in the description. Um, what really mattered was the lens. I invested in a prime lens. Um, a lot of photographers agree that the lens is even more important than the body. So you need to look into that if you're planning to get accessories for your new camera body. Okay, number three, snag that social media handle. This might sound like we're going ahead too far, but in this very saturated digital age, I feel like everybody has a social media platform and snagging your name is very crucial. You don't want someone to steal it from you. And so I would suggest starting with at least two platforms to advertise yourself on, Instagram and Facebook. Um, don't ignore Facebook. It's not super outdated. Um, there's many moms and families on there and depending on your target clients, they will be on there looking for you. Um, and then if you have time, make sure you also have a website once you have a gallery to showcase. Number four, study to improve. You can read blogs, watch tutorials, um, analyze images, I would suggest looking through magazines, Pinterest, Instagram, and studying exactly what do you like about the images? What about its composition? What about the lighting? Um, also, don't forget about the models, how they're posed, what they're wearing, what the background is. I would say take it one step at a time. Don't overload your senses. Um, pay attention mostly to the composition and lighting because you really can't change your editing at the end if your background and the lighting is already off to begin with. Also, approach some local photographers. Um, when I was first beginning, I definitely reached out and emailed people. I wanted to see and learn from their experiences. One thing though, I didn't realize that photographers really cared to help beginner photographers. I didn't know that there's actually um, assistants and second shooters for wedding photographers. I didn't know that I could have just asked and they might have let me tag along. Okay, number five, you actually have to go out and practice. Just as if you're playing soccer or playing the piano, you have to go and actually practice and perform, not just practice in your living room the whole time in order to test your abilities. So you need to go and volunteer. Maybe if you're in school, go and join an organization and see if you can help with their marketing and their social media. And that's how I really got started in college. Um, another way is to volunteer to bring your camera to family gatherings and events, any local festivities or festivals. I know some things are closed right now, but if a little gathering is open opening up, then volunteer to see if you can bring your own camera. Um, if you're working in the workforce, maybe you can ask your manager if you can bring your camera in to use for social media marketing. I don't think they're gonna say no. Um, if you're volunteering locally, maybe you can ask them to tag you if they're 
posting your images online and that gets your name out there and also gets you some experience. Number six, build your marketable portfolio with a model call. So you're still practicing, but you want to make sure you actually have images you can advertise with. So you need to go and approach strangers or your friends and see if they want to model for you. But be more strategic than I was. I just got whoever wanted to model for me. But I would suggest number one, get people in your target audience or your dream client. So for example, if you're wanting to be a senior photographer, go ahead and approach a senior. If you're wanting to photograph couples, approach a couple. If you want to do family, same deal. Um, I would suggest, honestly though, to approach one or two people in the beginning versus a family of 10, just because a small group is easier to manage than a large group like that big family. Um, also, you need to make sure that the people you're photographing are people you're comfortable with or are comfortable with you. They're fine with the camera. You don't want to have stiff people to begin with because that will just frustrate you and also not give you a good experience as a beginner photographer. Another thing, make sure that they match your style. I know this might get a little nitpicky, but if you start off on the right foot to begin with, then you're gonna have a stronger marketing portfolio than I did. So make sure that you're looking at their vibe. If you want to photograph more moody photos, but you have hyper clients or hyper kids, those two don't really go hand in hand. So make sure you study that before you hire the models. Um, also look into their dress, their appearance. If you're wanting to photograph light and airy, um, photos, then don't let your clients wear dark, grungy clothing. Yes, you can style them, but if they're not comfortable in what they're wearing, then that will show through in the photographs. All right, with your model call, you also need to explain the process. Yes, it's free, but feel free to write a contract if you want to, just to detail everything out. You need to explain that you're a newbie and that you're going to be using this for marketing purposes and that they're going to let you post it on social media or wherever. Also, count how many images they're going to get. You want to photograph as many things as you want, but you're also new, so you're not going to be sure how many you can deliver. So you want to alleviate the pressure off yourself by just giving them a ballpark or even just saying, I'm going to have to decide later. I'm not sure. Also, you should note the length of time. Your time and their time is valuable. You can shoot as long as you want or as long as they're available, but make sure you remember that on the actual day of a real photo shoot, the timer will be ticking. You also need to map out the possible locations. If your models are from California and you're based in Florida, I don't think it's gonna work unless they pay for you or you pay for yourself um, or for them. <laughs> make sure that you're at the same location or you're willing to travel. And then lastly, for the model call, you need to make sure you treat them like kings and queens because you want to give them the experience that your real clients will have. You want to practice your great customer service and your hospitality. 7. Prep for post-processing Now that you've gotten your images, you need to go and edit. Don't get hung up on presets or emulating your favorite photographer's edits. Just make sure you have the basics. Don't overexpose, don't underexpose, and don't deliver blurry images unless you have an obvious relevant reason for that mood. You also might want to take note that in order to create light and airy images like I mentioned previously, you need to make sure that when you're shooting in camera, that your background is going to give you that effect. You can't have light or airy images if your background is all solid and dark, like a line of trees or dark bushes or hedges. Post and promote your business. You're going to share your images on your social media and your website. While taking into account social media strategy of hashtags, location tags, and client tags, and all of that. But that's a whole different topic for a different video. But make sure you also jump in on your stories and share about the session. People want to see that you're alive and that you're real. If you're not comfortable with sharing your face, maybe do a behind the scenes video reel. 
that, I really do recommend to have at least one photo of yourself in your social media feed just so that people know that you're not some psychopath or some serial killer trying to take their pictures. Another thing, make sure that you share this business with your family and friends. Don't be shy. I know it might be a little cringy at first, but they need to know. Nobody will know that you're a photographer unless you share it. Make sure you list what kind of things people can use their images for. For example, they can use it for a wedding invitation, for their anniversary album, for family Christmas pictures. People just need ideas sometimes, but they always would love fresh images. All right, here comes my secret sauce of how I got my first engagement session and some of my family portraits. I actually posted on a Facebook page. So go ahead and sell yourself on specific Facebook pages in your local community. Make sure you read the terms and conditions first, just because some pages won't let you do that. But another thing is, Posting your ad on physical bulletin boards, whether it be at a local Starbucks or a local cafe. Some people let you do that, and if they do, then great. All right, I hope this video has helped you, but I wanna give you three takeaways. One, you need to study and practice. Two, you need to network and treat everyone with great service so that they'll refer you and also have a great experience. And then three, you need to promote yourself. Don't be ashamed, just tell everyone. It doesn't matter. Don't feel embarrassed. I hope this video has given you confidence in how to move forward to get your first paying client to finally start the photography business in 2020. So if you have any questions, let me know down below and I'd be happy to help. Remember, just have fun and make it a memorable experience for both you and your clients. And till then, see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>